Welcome to another episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called The Billion Dollar Scam with Modern Day Slaves. There are thousands of Americans being lured out of their life savings by a sophisticated criminal network using modern day slaves. The following is a true tale of a modern day criminal network that is using modern day slaves. This new crime has been in operation for about three short years. During this short time, it has grown into a multi-billion dollar industry. This crime scams people out of their life savings. This huge scam operation relies on an army of modern day slaves, assembled by what the United Nations has called one of the largest human trafficking events in Asia in recent history. These crime syndicates are run out of war-torn Myanmar and other countries in the Southeast Asia area about 8,000 miles away from the west coast of the United States. In the mountains of eastern Myanmar, construction echoes through the hills. There is a small territory that is separated by a few meters of the shallow Moi River. There are large compounds being built to house thousands of people. This one place is being built along the Thailand and Myanmar border. This place, is completely out of place in this untamed landscape of lush greenery that stretches for as far as the eye can see. This is the center of the billion dollar scam industry which the FBI understands from the Thailand intelligence. This is the haven for Chinese organized crime syndicates that are engaged in fraud and other criminal acts. Mayawadi is a township in southeastern Myanmar, close to the border with Thailand. Separated from the Thai border town of Mae Sot by the Moi River, the town is the most important trading point between Myanmar and Thailand. This location looks like a modern-day apartment complex that you would see anywhere. The 10-foot blackened covered fence and a guard tower would suggest that there is more to the eye here than just a modern-day apartment complex. Even from satellite pictures, it looks like a modern-day town evolving into a city. Some buildings have courtyards but with fencing around it like a prison yard. The town has water fountains and sculptures but they do not have water, people or any signs of ever being used. There are no parking garages, yet the town seems to hold upwards of 100,000 people, but only a handful of cars in the whole place. Seems most of the cars belong to contractors building the new apartments in the compound. The whole new complex is over 260 acres and still growing. There are towers all around the complex that are guard towers. This is the home for the modern day slaves that are doing the dirty work to scam victims from around the world of billions of dollars. Issue is these are not the only places run by the Chinese crime syndicate. They have compounds in Cambodia, Thailand, Philippines, Myanmar, and other Southern Asia countries. In the Philippines, the scams are operated out of Philippine offshore gambling operator system known as POGO. The United Nations estimates that up to 120,000 people could be held in compounds across Myanmar, with another 100,000 people held in Cambodia and elsewhere in conditions that amount to modern-day slaver. These Chinese crime syndicates pull in unsuspecting workers from places all over the globe. Middle East, Egypt, India, Philippines, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and as far away as Eastern South America. These Chinese syndicates pry on individuals that are down on their luck and out of work. They lure them with new job possibilities with free travel and training to start a new job or continue in the field that they recently had. They sell them a luxury lifestyle and wealth, and when a person is down on his luck, 
They are easy targets, and that is what they are looking for. Most documented trafficking cases involve people with limited access to education and are engaged in low-wage work. In these new Chinese syndicates, many of the victims are well-educated, occasionally from professional positions or even with a graduate or postgraduate degree, computer literate and multilingual. The bosses of these syndicates have quotas for bringing in people to work for them. Once they get to a major city like Bangkok, Thailand, they are transferred to a vehicle and drive seven hours to another small town near Myanmar border. From there, they are driven across the bridge to an armed guard compound known as Gate. This is the last freedom they will see. This happens in at least 18 other towns and cities all around Asia that are known to the United Nation as of now. Problem is, there are more compounds being built every day. Many of the compounds in which people are forced into online criminal activity are physically located in jurisdictions where governance and the rule of law are weak and authority is contested. The military coup, ongoing violence and armed conflicts in Myanmar, and the resultant breakdown in the rule of law have provided fertile ground for an exponential rise in criminal activity. Following the coup, transnational organized criminal actors were able to widen their existing activities within the country by working with factions within the armed forces and various militia groups. Many of the scam compounds in Myanmar are located in weakly regulated and often porous border areas which are characterized by a lack of formal law enforcement structures, oversight, and accountability. This is further exacerbated by a number of conditions commonly associated with situations of conflict in these locations. These include a distorted economy that is heavily reliant on crime, the presence of organized criminal groups, and a non-existent justice and protection system that perpetuates impunity. At the same time, Many online scam compounds in the region are based in special economic zones, established by the respective states, which have been characterized by opaque regulation and the proliferation of multiple illicit economies, including human trafficking, illegal wildlife trade, and drug production. As of 2019, there were more than 5,000 300 special economic zones across 147 economies around the world, with many more planned. The definition of a special economic zones is determined individually by each state, but broadly speaking. Special economic zones can be understood as specific areas of industrial development designated by the state that benefit from fiscal, tax, and regulatory regimes and infrastructure support to encourage investment. To achieve these goals, special economic zones operate under specific legal regimes that are designed to attract foreign investment. Three quarters of the world's special economic zones are in Asia, with 737 special economic zones located in Southeast Asia, of which 167 were under development with a further 235 planned. The countries of the greater Mekong subregion account for 184 of these with many in border areas. Regulatory gaps are also present in the governance of POGOs in the Philippines. POGOs themselves represent a loophole, providing online gaming primarily to gamblers from jurisdictions in which gambling is illegal. In 2020, the Philippine Department of Finance estimated that more than 230 POGOs were operating in the country but the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, responsible for regulating the online gaming industry, had licensed only 60, and of these, only 10 were paying taxes according to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. As of May 2022, there were 34 licensed POGOs in the country. More recently, Philippine authorities have ordered the closure of around 200 operations that were operating without a license and the deportation of hundreds of migrant workers. The POGOs have been associated with a range of offenses, including the smuggling of migrants, kidnappings and detention of migrant workers that may constitute trafficking in persons, as well as corruption and financial crimes, including tax evasion. The action is the first element of the trafficking in persons definition, 
is the action which brings an individual into the trafficking situation. In the case of the online scams, people are primarily recruited to these operations, often via advertised professional roles such as programmers, marketers, or human resource specialists. Through what appear to be legitimate and even elaborate procedures that may include more than one round of interviews as well as language or other tests, some victims have reported being targeted by recruiters in their country of origin or from a third country while others were recruited when they were already present in the country of destination, having lost their jobs during the pandemic and being unable or unwilling to return home. The traffickers may also assist with transportation, including in some cases the necessary documentation. This may take the form of regular entry into one country followed by smuggling them over the border to the site of the scam operation. The migrants may have been assured of a work visa on arrival at the destination, and some have reported not being aware they have crossed another international border. Example from Thailand into Myanmar. On arrival, migrants are typically received by the traffickers who collect them from the airport or other port of entry and take them to temporary accommodation or transfer them directly to the gated compounds where the scams operate, harboring them there, where they are watched over by security guards who are often heavily armed. At some point after arrival, the traffickers will take possession of the migrants' passports. There are also reports of people being abducted and forced to work in scam operations or being sold on from other forms of migrant labor. Many of those who have been able to leave a scam operation report that they were fraudulently recruited, deceived into believing that they were moving to legitimate jobs, they may have learned of these jobs via social networks or from a job site that is believed to be legitimate. However, many report that they saw the advertisement on a social media platform, including many of the best known such as Facebook, Instagram, and Tinder. The conditions offered in these fraudulent ads are typically very attractive. For example, promising a high salary, regular bonuses, free accommodation, and food. The jobs are often said to be based in Bangkok or other regional hubs. These false advertisements are part of a long-standing concern in the region about internet scams offering fake employment or visa opportunities and other fraudulent information to migrants for other purposes, such as to harvest their personal data. This occurs in the context of wider concerns about the role of recruitment agents in human rights abuses against migrant workers. This use of deception to recruit people into the online scams constitutes the means element of the trafficking in person's definition. In some cases, individuals may have understood that they were being recruited to conduct online fraud but were deceived as to the conditions. For example, they were not aware that they would be detained in the compounds, under or unpaid, subject to beatings and other forms of violence, or forced to pay a ransom in order to leave. The means element can also be relevant to the exploitation element of the trafficking definition, since once in the compounds, individuals are subjected to the threat or use of force or other forms of coercion. They are deprived of their liberty and in some cases are unable even to move between different floors of the compound in which they are confined. Reports have also been received of people being chained to their desk. Many victims report that their passports were confiscated often along with their mobile phones, or they were otherwise prohibited from contacting friends or family. A situation that UN human rights experts have described as detention incommunicado. Reports indicate that there is limited food and drinking water and that living conditions can be cramped and unsanitary. Victims also report working hours as long and difficult, sometimes related to the different time zones in which the scamming activities are taking place. In addition, there is reportedly inadequate access to medical treatment with some disturbing cases of victims who have died as a result of mistreatment and lack of medical care. Reports commonly describe people being subjected to torture, cruel and degrading treatment and punishments including the threat or use of violence, as well as being made to witness violence against others most commonly beatings, humiliation, electrocution and solitary confinement, 
especially if they resist orders or disobey compound rules, or if they do not meet expected scamming targets. Reports have also been received of sexual violence, including gang rape as well as trafficking into the sex sector, most usually as punishment, for example, for failing to meet their targets. The traffickers hold an ever-increasing debt over the migrants, claimed to be for costs such as for travel, quarantine on arrival, training and living costs, and performance-related fines, which they are told they have to pay before they can be freed. This is a situation of debt bondage. This debt increases further when they are sold to another scam operation, either within or outside the country, as observed in examples of transfers of victims from Cambodia to Myanmar, which may also constitute trafficking for the purpose of servitude or slavery. Sometimes the traffickers will demand this debt as ransom from victims' families before the individuals can be released from the sea. On pound, with victims reporting that their family members were approached for ransom payments with photographic evidence of the individual suffering physic. On occasion, people have attempted escape, including by jumping off the compound buildings or swimming across rivers, for example, from Myanmar to Thailand or Cambodia to Vietnam. However, these attempts often end unsuccessfully, either with death or severe punishment upon recapture. Victims held in these scam operations are being exploited for the purpose of forced criminality to generate profit for the criminal actors that orchestrate the scams. Individuals are forced or coerced to perpetrate online fraud using a range of platforms including fake gambling websites and cryptocurrency investment platforms, as well as romantic and financial scams so-called pig butchering where fake romantic relationships or friendships are used to defraud online users of significant amounts of money. The scams are often sophisticated. Fake websites are built to showcase fraudulent data in order to convince the target that there are significant profits to be made. People who are targeted can also receive small amounts of money to convince them of the legitimacy of the platform. The scam is usually a long process in which targets are approached for weeks or months to build trusted relationships. Some of the scam operations have developed detailed training manuals and scripts that the trafficked person is made to follow to perpetrate the crimes. A human rights-based response recognizes trafficking as a human rights violation, places victims of trafficking at the center, and promotes a systemic and structural response. It understands that human rights can be violated and abused during and after trafficking, including within the context of counter-trafficking measures, as well as more broadly within border management and other migration governance frameworks. Such a response allows for a nuanced intervention that considers the vulnerable situations that traffickers are able to exploit and works to redress the discriminations and power asymmetries that fuel impunity for traffickers, and deny justice to trafficked persons and migrants in situations of vulnerability. A human rights-based response understands that even where the situation of an individual does not constitute trafficking in persons, and whether or not they understood the criminal nature of the work they were undertaking, they may still be victims of human rights abuses and of other crimes. Furthermore, a human rights-based response to these online scams would situate the phenomenon in the wider context within the region of shrinking civic space and attacks on human rights defenders and independent media, which requires steps to avoid reprisals and ensure human rights protection of those at risk. The protection of human rights must be at the center of all measures taken to prevent and end trafficking in persons and to protect, assist, and provide redress to victims. This should start prior to any situation of trafficking, as counter-trafficking measures are most likely to be successful and to avoid adverse human rights effects when they are designed with attention to the external context in which they operate. Socioeconomic inequalities and lack of access to decent work, combined with conflict situations as well as climate change and other environmental factors, are driving precarious mobility within Southeast Asia. Limited regular migration pathways and the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic during this period exacerbated challenges in accessing safe and dignified migration pathways. A comprehensive, 
Rights-based response would help to distinguish victims of trafficking in persons and migrants in situations of vulnerability through proper and timely identification. It would also recognize and accommodate the many reasons why individuals may not wish to disclose their trafficking experiences or to be identified as having been trafficked or participate in a criminal investigation and or prosecution. Trafficked persons may be traumatized and disoriented after leaving the compounds where they were effectively imprisoned and not be ready to disclose their experiences. They may fear the traffickers or the authorities. They may be ashamed of having been deceived by the traffickers and forced into criminality. They may simply want to leave the experience behind them and return home as quickly as possible. They may know that in some cases being identified as a victim of trafficking does not benefit them, for example, in being permitted to stay in the destination country to find other livelihood options. States should provide a trauma-informed response that is sensitive to people's experience of trafficking and other human rights abuses, and protect individuals from reprisals by and retaliation from criminal gear. Ooh both in the country where they were trafficked and the country to which they are returned. Ned. A gender-sensitive response would recognize that most victims in online scam compounds are likely to be men, and in this regard put in place measures to combat stereotypes and victim-blaming attitudes as well as gender-based discrimination in the delivery of assistance and due. Tice while ensuring at the same time that the response is sensitive to the specific needs of women victims of traffic. A comprehensive response would recognize in addition that migrants who have not been trafficked but have been caught up in the phenomenon, for example being witness to the abuse of others, may also have human rights concerns for which they should be able to access protection. A comprehensive response would also recognize that criminal actors should be guaranteed the right to a fair trial and to due process for any crimes of which they are accused. Some of those who have returned to their own country from these scam operations report shame and stigma over their experiences, some citing in particular the fact that they were forced to defraud fellow citizens. Some adolescent victims have felt unable to return to school. Other victims report being denied work while criminal charges are pending. Some have been subjected to harassment by state officials after returning to their own country, including violations of their right to freedom of movement and to privacy. With public disclosure of their names and shaming them for being victims of trafficking, states have recognized that stigma further disadvantages trafficked persons. Trafficked persons and other migrants in situations of vulnerability need access to long-term assistance on their return, tailored to their particular end eads to support their sustainable reintegration by ensuring their well-being, facilitating their social integration and preventing re-traffic. Ing. Returnees may also need assistance with housing, physical and mental health care, access to education and support in securing decent. In many instances, countries in Southeast Asia already have in place legal and policy frameworks relevant to counter-trafficking, in addition to myriad tools and mechanisms at national, regional, and global levels. Although these existing legal and policy frameworks continue to be relevant and applicable, in some cases they fall short of international standards and their implementation has in large part failed to respond adequately to the situation of trafficking for forced criminality and the online scams that emerged prior to, during, and since the COVID pandemic. The enormous scale of the situation, cumulatively amounting to hundreds of thousands of people across the region who have fallen victim to this complex form of trafficking since 2021, has undoubtedly contributed to the inadequate response. The fact that this phenomenon was in many ways exacerbated by the pandemic has been another barrier to effective response, particularly in the face of widespread border closures and other movement restrictions. Further complicating the situation is that this form of trafficking poses challenges for how the region has traditionally viewed and understood trafficking, including notions as to who is a victim, which are origin or destination countries, and what kinds of law enforcement responses as well as cross-border cooperation are needed. 
the trafficker's ability to move their operations, and often physically their victims, between countries in the region demonstrates that states need to take a sustained regional approach to addressing this issue. Above all, efforts in Southeast Asia to strengthen the protection and promotion of human rights and to improve governance and the rule of law must be as much a part of the response to these scams as a robust criminal justice response. States in the region need to summon the political will to address organized crime and corruption as part of a rights-based and comprehensive response to the human rights violations and abuses detailed in this briefing paper. Such a holistic approach provides the only solution to breaking the cycle of impunity and ensuring protection and justice for the people who have been trafficked and abused within this complex phenomenon. In conclusion, if you have anyone that you do not know message you via any social media website, do not engage in conversation. They are anything from romance websites, gaming websites, or any website that will ask you to learn a new way to make money. Remember anything that seems too good to be true like instant money or great return on investments are all possibly a scam perpetrated by the Chinese criminal networks. These people try anything and can keep you on the hook for months at a time. They hint around about how rich they are compared to you and how their lifestyle is so much better than yours. They send you pictures of how glamorous their lives are where in actuality they are slaves trying to meet a quota to keep from being beaten or forced to do squats or push-ups or even beatings with electrical sticks. Remember these are just people that are forced into slavery to steal your money. It's a shame that you will keep your money but the Chinese syndicate will chalk up a loss on the individual that you rejected. Best thing you can do if you ever find yourself approached by someone that is in this scam is to just get out as soon as possible and report it to the authorities that can help try to end this once and for all. Just tell them where you first meet. If the site can block other players, then block or report them there. Do whatever it takes to keep your money. Do not be a victim and keep your hard-earned money. If you have the power to stop it at the source, please by all means stop this slavery. The world will be better for your efforts. Remember, most of this money goes to the CCP. Thanks for listening to another podcast of the True Crime Tales. Please come again. And remember, please subscribe.